Sunday afternoon, listeners. Welcome to Women on Words, the podcast where we talk life, love, and literature. I'm author Sierra London, and with my co-host, author L. Lorenz. Hi, L. Hi. And writer Michelle Ingrid. Hi, Michelle. Hello. It is time for Book Club. Hey, we're so excited. So this month we read Ties That Tether by Jane, is it Igaro? Igaro. Igaro. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jane Igaro. And I believe that Michelle is going to read the back cover to you so we can get started. Okay. So first of all, can I just tell you this is a gorgeous cover? Yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Okay, so from our back cover, when a Nigerian woman falls for a man she knows will break her mother's heart, she must choose between love and her family. At 12 years old, Azere promised her dying father she would marry a Nigerian man and preserve her culture, even after immigrating to Canada. Her mother has been vigilant about helping, well, forcing her to stay within the Nigerian dating pool ever since. But when another match made by mom goes wrong, Azere ends up at a bar enjoying the company and later sharing the bed of Rafael Castano, a man who is tall, handsome, and white. When their one-night stand unexpectedly evolved into something serious, Azere is caught between her feelings for Rafael and the compulsive need to please her mother. Soon, Azere can't help wondering if loving Rafael makes her any less of a Nigerian. Can she be with him without compromising her identity? The answer will either cause Azere to be audacious and fight for her happiness or continue to be the compliant daughter. <laughs> and that's that is the back book, back story for Ties to Tether. So, okay. ladies. Where do we start? Where do we start? That's the perfect question. So I'm going to ask <laughs> one question. Number one, what are your thoughts about 12-year-old Azere promising her father that she will marry a Nigerian boy and continue her culture? Well, for me, unless she was getting married that day or maybe later on in the month, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's the right question to, uh, to ask of a 12-year-old. That's just, that's just me. But, um, I think I understood Azari's father wanting to, in his mind, maybe ensure that his daughter was safe with a man from a culture that he understood and that he knew. And perhaps that's what he was trying to do. How that played out later in the story, from my standpoint, was unfortunate. Lisa, I your thoughts? I absolutely agree, Sierra. Um, I have a problem with people um, imposing their will on others, especially from a deathbed, because that's something that you don't want to break. In your in your life, you're like, okay, I'll promise this to them. I have to do it, and there's no way around it because you can't negotiate after that point. And a 12-year-old has no idea what she's promising at that time. She had no idea who she would be in life, let alone that she's going to marry a certain type of man. And what she grew up to be was an independent woman, and then she's promised that she's going to marry a man that's going to put her back into, you know, the hold of being a mother and being a housewife and giving up her career. And that's not something that she wanted to do once she became an adult. So I don't think that a 12-year-old had the capacity to understand the promise that she made. Yeah. And I actually want to go back um, just to lay some groundwork. So in the opening scene of this book, we actually, meet, yeah. um, we actually meet Azare, and she's on a date. Now, ladies, I, yeah, when I was true. dating, I loved dating. I don't think I ever loved a date that my mama sent me a phone, but that's the situation <laughs> that we find Azare in. <laughs> So her mama <laughs> on a date, and uh, the date, uh, 
is it's not your typical date because the man is asking, can you cook? Can you cook adult food? Because um, Azare, not only is is she supposed to marry um, a uh, a Nigerian man, but from a specific tribe at that. Um, so I think that makes it even more challenging. And did I mention that Azari don't live in Nigeria? She live in Canada, in Toronto, Canada. Yes. Okay, so, so let's set the stage. <laughs> so, yes, it does stage. set the stage. But Azari goes on to say that she feels more like it's an interview as opposed to um, – a date. So, um, so I just wanted to prep you all, listeners, so you know what this young woman, who's 25 in the story, opens what she's up against from a cultural standpoint. And the first line in the book is, "Culture is important. Preserving it even more important. It's the reason I've always abided by one simple dating rule, and tonight I've broken that rule." And I'm going to turn it back over to Michelle to lead us forward into how the heroine meets the hero. Okay, so let's set the stage for this book. Azada is at this extremely uncomfortable date. Um, And at one point, in the midst of this conversation with this gentleman named Richard that her mother has set her up with, this good Nigerian boy that her mother has set her up with, He asks her about what she can cook. (laughs) You know, she's like, yeah, I can cook. I mean, like you said, it's an interview. And then at one point when he says, well, you'll want to have babies, and then you'll stop working when you have babies. And she says no, and he's thrown. Like, he's like, I like my women a little more submissive. And she Mm -hmm. sees red, purple, green, orange. She sees all the beautiful colors of the lands of Nigeria. (laughs) And... She is not happy. And she pretty much, like, drops him at the table and says goodbye, and she leaves. And I have to admit, in that moment, I love her because she's, like, all in about, "Uh uh-uh, you're not going to, you know, you're not tying me down to this life that I'm not going to, you know, I've worked too hard. I I can almost hear her say I've worked too hard for where I've gotten for you to do that. So she leaves the table and then goes to the bar to have a drink to unwind. And when she gets there, there's this gorgeous, uh, man there, and he's drinking alone, and she gets to talking to him. He apologizes for the bad date that she had with the other guy, and she's like, oh, you're apologizing for his actions? I'm, I mean, I'm already liking him. And lo and behold, this couple goes from meeting at this bar, having a drink together, sharing a little bit of an, uh, a kiss to the point where the bartender's like, we're closed, get a room in this beautiful establishment. And much to our shock of this good Nigerian girl, she does it. She goes upstairs with uh, with Raphael, and they have this amazing night, and she gets up and she leaves. And all she knows about him is that he used to live in New York. He's moving back to Toronto, and he was there for a job interview. That's all she knows. And she arrives at work. I think a day or two later, and they're introducing the new guy, and lo and behold, it's her one-night stand, Raphael. And Raphael doesn't just turn her head because he's new. He's turning everybody's head because this man is gorgeous, gorgeous. I don't know if I'd have been able to, not get, like, slip in my phone number, but I understand. Okay. So, yeah, so we are at the work. This couple has run into each other. They decided that, you know what, that was just, she's decided it's just a one-night stand. He's obviously still interested, and they get put on an assignment together. So have mm-hmm. I taken us far enough to set the stage? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. All right. So I'll, I'll start with, before we go further with it, I'll start with, did you enjoy the injection of the Nigerian culture? Did you feel it? Was there enough? Was there too little in the story, in this character? Because this book is built on a brick uh, brick of culture being the, the storyline. Was there enough? So for me, um, since this book, one of the major tenets of this book is um, culture and maintaining culture, especially as you see more and more of a, a melting pot of cultures come together, especially in a place like, uh, you know, a country like uh, Canada, and they specifically live in Toronto. So for me, I heard a lot of dialogue about culture, but I didn't see anything between 
um, Azuri and her family that were so um, Nigerian centric that it would negate, you know, this potential budding relationship between her and Raphael. I mean, they had dinner around the table. Raphael and his family had dinner around the table. You know, they did chores together and, you know, they help each other out. Raphael and his sister, they help each other out. So I didn't see anything culturally so significant on the page um, from, uh, from, a, from a Nigerian culture standpoint. There was talk, there was talk, but I didn't see a lot of it. And so that was a part of my struggle with this book. I'm like, what is so much going on that they are doing from a cultural standpoint that there's no room in her life for a man who's not of that culture? But, you know, that was my perspective. I agree um, somewhat. I think there should have been more culture added to the book simply because it just focused around the culture of an old-fashioned mother who is harping on making her daughter get married. And I get that. That's part of the culture. But what what about the rest of the culture? There's It's a diverse country, and they need – they have other things other than just getting – forcing their daughters to get married. Mm-hmm. And, and dressing you know, it's 2021 – and I think that the, the women in Nigeria are more progressive. I've watched plenty of um, Nigerian television and on on the internet, and I see the women are independent now, and they they have jobs and careers, and they're not just stuck at home. So um, I didn't like the fact that it just regulated the women once they got married. You have to stay home and you have to have babies. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the the current culture. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I have to admit, um, there were some pieces of it that I saw, and I thought maybe I clicked onto them primarily because, you know, I've attended a Nigerian wedding. So when she explained, like, certain aspects, like, I believe they go, they go to an event where the mother's like, why are you so covered up? Like, I don't know if you've ever attended a Nigerian we- a wedding. The women wear these very fitted outfits, and honest to God, I cannot do the dances. It's a very visual um, culture in that respect. And, I mean, it, it, it's, it's gorgeous and very bright and beautiful. I don't know if she gave us enough of it. There were a few explanations, but I don't know if I felt like we were fully immersed in it. And as much as I enjoyed the pieces of it that were there, I, um, I wanted more. I wanted to hear what was in some more of the food. I wanted to know about the smells. I wanted to know what her mother's, like, what is the, 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 the accented, you know, seasoning that you smell? Like, I know if I walk into my mother's house, I'm smelling curry and I'm smelling cumin. Like, I wanted to know what is she, what are we getting out of that? That part I did miss out on. Um, so let's, moving forward, our character finds out that she is pregnant with a dollar store she goes and gets herself a Before we go there, can we speak to? Um, so I want to get into the romance of this book uh, because this okay. is an area that I actually thought. Yeah, so this is a part that I actually thought was lacking in the book. Um, like I think is right on the border of romance with women's fiction because there's a significant about amount of the story that was about her and her mother and not her and the hero. But I wanted to ask, what did you feel about when they see each other for the first time after the one night stand and Raphael asked her, why did you leave without saying goodbye? What was your thoughts on that and, and, and the, the excuse that she gives him? Like that, that, that dialogue, how did y'all feel about that? Like just, okay, I like this guy, and we had a good time together, and then I see him again, and he asked me this question, and boop. This is what I say. What did you think, Lisa? She had some issues mm-hmm. to deal with. Um, I don't like that she blew him off because she was really feeling him. But I get why she did it, because she was guilty, and her mother 